guys. Welcome to the Thunder Rooster Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Rowan. I'm Paul. And today we are going to be jumping straight into our third week of the paranormal month. No, it's not an official month. It's our official <laughs> our month. Our official month. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, we've, got, we've got, what, uh, alien abductions and yeah. poltergeist, poltergeist down so alien. So we're two yep. weeks deep and this is our third one. But uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, near-death experiences, also known as NDE. Uh, very so we're interesting, going, very we're, interesting We're going to basically talk yeah. about, you know, people having visions and, you know, seeing an afterlife or having an outer body experience, you know. So it's not just like I was riding my bike and <laughs> if I hadn't have seen this little thing looking to the right i would have got hit by a car you know not that kind of near-death experience (laughs) so uh we're gonna kind of you know um we're gonna discuss the theories or beliefs behind um the afterlife essentially um how it all connects to the paranormal and also kind of look into a scientific explanation of it excuse me i apparently need some more drink (laughs) Basically, we're going to figure out why we're all here. And we're going to hear from uh, uh, my old mama. So she's this is Ron. Be, yeah. All right. So she's going to be uh, calling in, and uh, we're going to discuss uh, my grandma's near-death experience. This so is pretty interesting, guys. It's kind of, uh, yeah. kind of leading into our first impressions of it. Um, I'll go first since I have brought up anyway. So. Of course. I've always believed in, I guess, an afterlife, so to speak, because I remember my grandma's near-death experience, like, as far back as I can remember, because I heard it the first time when I was so young, and I've heard it several other times, but, you know, I don't remember every detail of it, so that's why I'm calling on my mom. <laughs> well, that's okay, though. But yeah, I also grew up, you know, in a Christian background, so, you know... There's a lot of stuff kind of uh, ingrained in my mind growing up with it. Right. But I've definitely, um, I've developed thoughts of my own since I've became a man. (laughs) I won't go that far. (laughs) Kidding. Jesus. Jeez, give me some slack here, right? No. (laughs) So, uh, your first impressions on it. So... I'm very interested to hear this story because mm-hmm. you had mentioned it. You didn't go into too much um, information, so I'm curious about that. It wasn't so much. I mean, I'll I'll elaborate on this in a little bit, but as far as the near death experience, there was not really anything that I ever thought of, other than just I, I feel that um, there is somewhere that I believe we go after we pass, yeah. and I do firmly believe that that's true and i'll okay. explain later yeah i've always had always had that thought as well um and it always kind of baffled me anybody who didn't think otherwise or who thought otherwise mm-hmm. you know it's like you just blank out and nothing happens like i mean it's, it's a theory but it is a theory yeah but we'll there's definitely. other reasons why or why not right mm-hmm. yeah we'll definitely dump jump into that dump into that later <laughs> <laughs> For sure. but um yeah, uh, we'd like to remind everybody, if you like what we're doing here, uh, like our uh, videos, subscribe to our channel. That's very important because uh, that helps us in the algorithm, and it also helps us on our journey ahead to make this a full-time gig. We work full-time jobs. You know, all this is done on any kind of Any extra free time, time you and I have, Ron, we're, yeah. to- <laughs> we're together. That's about it. So, uh, definitely... Hit us up on there on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Spotify, wherever. Uh, we're on our road to 100. We're trying to get to 100 subscribers as fast as possible. <laughs> so, uh, but yes, anybody who's new, thanks for joining yes. us. Um, Appreciate you guys. This topic's a little choppy, so don't take this episode if it doesn't go so well as a example of what we do here. It's just, uh, it's dense. Yes. It's very dense. And in a sense, it's like there, at least I feel this way. There's really no right or wrong answer because no one knows. Right. 
Yeah. We exactly. can we can debate all you want on statistics and stuff, but at the end of the day, people are going to believe what they want to believe. No, I, I 100% you know what I mean? agree with you. Of course. That. Like it's there's <laughs> nobody it's like knows. the meaning of life, Ron. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to start off with what the definition of a near-death experience is. And like I said earlier, this is not just uh, I almost died story type thing. Um, uh, The definition is an unusual experience taking place on the brink of death and recounted by a person after recovery. Typically an out-of-body experience or a tunnel of light. This can also, there's also other descriptions of stuff being like a brilliant light, you're seeing sharp colors, really gorgeous colors that you can't even like define in right. human words. Sure. Uh, meeting God or, you know, the big guy, the giant ball of light, however you want to word it. Sure. Or there's also the other side of it where it's like a black void, you're, you're completely alone, feeling like the dreaded fear and torment of like nothingness and also a chance of meeting evil. And also, I mean, there's a lot of accounts where you're just floating out of your body and being able to tell the people who were working on you or whatever, what other people in another room. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Do you see what I'm seeing? (laughs) So (laughs) great. I'm going to go back now. It's definitely a wide wide bit there um for sure so you had some stuff on the uh more more elaboration on the as far as the clinical yeah. like on the clinical yeah, science the clinical, type yeah. side yeah there's there's just a little again well, like we'll touch more on like the so when you when the, you were talking uh, about the biological explanations right. like later on in the episode. so like the idea of like the tunnel vision i mean what that actually indicates for yourself is you know, fear mm-hmm. and your oxygen deprivation. Right. That's what causes the tunnel vision. Yeah. It's, well, they, that is also explaining stuff like with, uh, fighter pilots, you know, when they're pulling G's and stuff, uh, the, the blood gets away from their brain and, you know, they get the tunnel vision stuff starts getting gray and they just black out. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's really Something. interesting seeing some of the videos just in the little, uh, the, uh, I don't know what they call it. It's like a you're in a seat and you're going around in a circle really fast, and you're there. It's a simulating G pool, but they'll crank that thing all the way up to like seven to nine G's just oh, to see geez. how you'll handle Forget it. Forget it. Yeah, you'll be crazy. wearing your lunch. <laughs> Ugh, I probably would for sure. I would too. Yeah. So that's that's one <clears throat> angle of it, and then as we said, there's different testimonial type accounts and and most people have heard these in these situations coming to the white light the out of body experience mm-hmm. the sense of peace and an actual an awareness of being deceased mm-hmm. or passing you know what i mean the one thing that was very interesting and we discussed about this so there was a there's a scientist his name is Christoph Couch um i read this article on scientific america and Christoph Couch uh, Christoph Coach. I'm sorry, C O C H. My bad. <laughs> it just sounded funny. Couch. Chris off the couch. Chris off the couch. Chris get off the couch. Chris get off the couch. <laughs> <laughs> so he uh, there was this article in June, uh, and it was uh, it was a he wrote the article. He's actually a part of the board of directors for um, for the company as well as the chief uh, scientist. But the one interesting thing he had in the article, he said that when it comes to hospital patients. Hospital patients that are admitted with cardiac arrest, he said that one in 10 of those patients will experience an episode of near-death experience. I was just like, wow. Considering, you know, in the top, I don't know, top three, top five leading causes of death, heart disease, Mm. that's a lot of people. So if one out of 10 are coming up with this, you know, or or going through this, this situation and whatnot, I mean, that is just crazy to think. So it is out there and people do experience these things, but yet they still don't have a grasp on what is caused. My side, I think maybe it is just brain activity, the chemicals like fight or flight, serotonin, all these kind of things that make up in our brain. Mm. Is that a trigger? So it's essentially like even though your body's completely stopped, like your 
your brain's not, well, not your brain, but like, right. You're not breathing. Right. Your heartbeat is gone. Your brain could still be technically on after you know, everything. Maybe it's on like bypass or something. You right. know? <laughs> Just for, for a couple of minutes or whatever it may be. Yeah. Just enough. So that like, if you know, if the brain loses oxygen, you're screwed. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like one of those things. So one out of 10, that was just, I was like, okay. So that's a lot of people that go through these same things. Yeah. So then it must mean that you have more accounts for therapy and research, mm-hmm. but we're still at that point where it's not hundred percent. Yeah. We'll get, we'll dive a little, we'll yeah, touch more based course. on that a little of later, course. but yeah. uh, like, what is your overall thoughts of the afterlife? Because Sure. I want to say probably like 92 to 93% of all of these cases usually bring people to, you know, an awareness or realization that right. there's something after death. Sure. Especially when they have an experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the afterlife, yes. Um, when we go in the story now about my grandmother or should I wait on that? No, you can go ahead. Now. Okay. So as far as afterlife, and, and I've talked to Ron with this, so again- for what we cover on our show with paranormal activities and conspiracies, the por- paranormal aspect, I this is where I really actually started to believe. So my grandmother, she passed away back in 2007. Um, she always had a a love for feathers. I never I never understood why. Yeah, she always liked feathers, and I started noticing maybe six months, maybe six months to a year after she passed, I would get these feathers. And they would be at the most random places, and it doesn't make any sense. I would find one outside of my home. Hell, I found one or two over the course of a couple of years at work. Mm-hmm. And in the first, I'll be honest, within the first year, I, I just bawled my eyes out. Yeah. I could not believe this was happening. I was like, there's no possible way that this is happening. I just didn't think that. Obviously, my feelings have changed ever since then, and I still get them every so often. I haven't got one in a while. Mm -hmm. But once that happened, I knew that there was good. I knew that she was okay. Just a part of me just just made me feel like I just knew. Yeah. And and ever since that moment, Ron, I, I can be a believer. I can have an open mind to this because it's something that affected me. Maybe not everyone has an experience like this, and that's maybe why they don't or they just don't care. But- that opened my eyes to this whole different world. Well, there's plenty of stories and a lot sure. of people out there that I, I myself am one of those people where like my grandma passed. I was really yeah. close to my grandma. Sure. My, me too. Yeah. I'll randomly smell her perfume out of nowhere. And it's one of those like people don't wear this kind of perfume right. anymore. It's kind not, of thing. Yeah. And I'll be by myself in my house yep. where that scent's nowhere around and I'll just smell it out of nowhere. She's there. You know. Or like my dad, he was a truck driver. You're telling me about this the other day too. I, the other day, I was at you work. You smelled diesel. I smelled diesel exhaust out of nowhere. I, you know, I took my mask off and was like sniffing around. Like I didn't smell it anywhere but that area, which was like, I'm not gonna lie, it made me smile, it put a big smile on my face. Right. You know, because you know that like it's 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 a memory and it's also. Like that's something that was involved in. in it's like a link good. between yeah here between, and there kind of yeah. thing. You know. So it's like my it's like your portal. I mean, yeah my my belief on on that, um, I honestly don't know. Right. Obviously, I believe there is something after. I have no idea what. I've got a lot of like battles in my mind over my religious upbringing and some problems I have with some of the stuff. Right. You know, as I'm you older. have questions like we all do. Sure. Yeah, um, I'll definitely get into those later because you know I've you know. I'll put it together better in my mind <laughs> by then, but I, I definitely believe in that. I don't know exactly what, and I don't have a problem admitting that because I don't think a lot of people actually know for sure. My thing of it is, is like not knowing is a huge, um, it's a huge way to bring fear to yourself is just not knowing something. Like being in a room with the lights off, you hear a little bump or something in the night and you're like, what is that? Right. It's just, you don't know. And I'll, I'll admit that sometimes I'll just randomly think about death and it's like, my gut will just drop. Like it's immediate fear. It's like, I just, I kind of just think like, what, what am I going to be like in that 
that time frame, you know? It's almost like time is running out, like an eternal clock kind of right. thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. But well, uh, We all have our clock, yeah. Yeah. I just uh, I wanted to run through this really quick. Um, hopefully, we have enough time. Actually, I don't think we have enough time for this. But uh, okay. we'll take a quick break real quick, and then uh, we'll jump right back into this. You know, Casper's going to cut us off on the on the cameras, so... Don't be afraid. Lock the doors. Turn out the lights. And climb into bed. It's time for Hillbilly Dead Time Stories. All right, welcome, welcome back. back, guys. Sorry about the sharp break there. Uh, I kind of want to get into a little bit of like uh, some more religious aspects. Um, I kind agree. Of it give kinda, some examples of uh, beliefs in the afterlife, essentially. It kind of goes hand in hand with this. Yeah. So we'll start out. It's kind of in uh, alphabetical order, so you'll have to excuse that, but uh, yes. no particular order. <laughs> All right. So atheism. Uh, atheist views on life after death vary depending on individual beliefs. Uh, some atheists don't believe in any sort of life after death but others believe in the existence of spirits, afterlife, or reincarnation. Um, Buddhism. Uh, Buddhists believe in reincarnation, the cycle of death and rebirth. Since Buddhists don't believe in the existence of souls, reincarnation means taking on another body in the next life. Uh, Bardo, the intermediate state, is the time between death and rebirth where Buddhists experience different phenomena. Uh, Christianity, Christian belief in the afterlife depends on what denomination they're a part of, but most believe in the resurrection of Jesus, the existence of the afterlife, and that moral choices you make on earth affect whether you end up in heaven or hell. Catholic Christians believe in purgatory, a place where the dead, dis- dead destined for heaven must first go if they need to need purification for their sins. Hinduism. Hindus believe in reincarnation after death in that the Atman, or soul, receives a new body and life depending on karma, a good and bad actions taken in their previous life. They believe you can be reincarnated as not only humans, but also animals, insects, and plants. Uh, Judaism. Jewish afterlife beliefs depend on the individual's beliefs. Jews focus more on their life on earth, but most Jews believe there is an afterlife. But it can come in many forms. Some Jews believe in a reincarnation cycle, while others believe in the world to come, a heaven-like paradise. Islam. Muslims believe that death is the end of physical life on earth, but the soul lives on. The soul goes to the angel of death to wait for judgment day. On Judgment Day, their actions during their time on Earth will be judged to determine whether they go to uh, Janat. It's J-A-N-N-A-T. I don't want to offend anybody. (laughs) Paradise or Jahannam. Hell. Uh, And then also ending here with uh, spiritualism. Spiritualists believe that the afterlife or spirit world is a realm where spirits continue to evolve. The belief souls live on and take their consciousness with them. They believe souls can interact with those living on earth through mediums in the spirit world and physical world. I just want to add to that list uh, the simulation theory where Mm -hmm. basically we're in a video game, essentially. (laughs) Somebody computer program. We're in the Matrix. Right. Uh, you ever see that episode of Rick and Morty where <laughs> he goes to like a, uh, you can make anything sound he bad plays a arcade hey, game, and in this arcade game, he starts from birth, Hi, goes all the way to the old age, has an entire life, and died. Snaps, at, or he, he dies, and all of a sudden, the game's off, he, he's still at the arcade, and he's like, what happened, what happened? <laughs> And then I, Morty I, has to, bad, or Morty. Rick has to tell him, you, you know, 30s, though, it was a game. <laughs> name's, your your name's Morty. Morty. <laughs> like, it's like, but it seems so real. Snap out of it. You know, snap out of it. 
And also, I want to bring this up because it, it's... I love the thought of this whenever I saw it, but the good place theory is like I'd like to state it as, uh, where basically, uh, depending on your actions, you die and then you go to the good place or the bad place. <laughs> and uh, you essentially die and you wake up sitting in, I'm assuming it's some kind of waiting room, and on the wall <laughs> right in front of you it says, everything's okay. You're right where you need to be or something like that. And I don't know. It's just like... Maybe that's how it is. I just had that Come little on. like feeling of, like that makes so much sense. Or maybe it's maybe it's like the guy in Beetlejuice uh, just waiting, you know, in line, and he's got his <laughs> he's got his little ticket. It's like now uh, now serving uh, one billion four hundred million. What was that book? The like the after the, the thing. Oh, the the, uh, the handbook. Yes. Yeah. Ah, uh, I don't remember the name of it. We'll but insert it's it. Handbook. We'll insert it yeah. here. <laughs> Love that studio. Man. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. But anyways, anyway, um, yeah. we're going to go into uh, this little thing where I wanted to give my mom a call because she's going to share with us. A, Mrs. Ron. Uh, yeah. I'm going to get to talk to Mrs. Ron for the first time. Yeah. It's pretty exciting. But uh, yeah, she's going to tell us about my uh, my grandma's uh, experience because like I said before, I, I don't know if I remember all of it. Sure. And we don't know how to set up a line properly, so I'm going to have to put it on speaker and hold it up to the microphone. <laughs> I apologize if it doesn't turn out well. I try. I tested it. Hello. Hey. Hello. How are you? You doing all right over there? <laughs> well, I've just got a real bad cough and it's pain in my butt. But yep. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let you know we're on the podcast. Hi, right Mrs. Now. Ron. How you doing? I'm good. Good to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. It seems like I already know you. I good know. Morning, same here. Guys. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I thought you could uh, share with us in the audience um, Grandma's afterlife or you know uh, near death experience because I I told them that. You know, I've heard the story a lot throughout my life, but I don't quite remember all the details, and I don't want to, you know, not do it justice by missing anything. <laughs> well, I'm old, and I hope I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> concentrate. <laughs> Goodness. Excuse me. Sorry about the cough, guys. <laughs> it's all right. You need a lozenge? Oh, I don't think that would even help. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, it all happened. It all started. Uh, it was a stormy night. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but Mama went to deliver Tresma. She was having Tresma, and she ended up being breached, and it just really, I guess, taxed her heart so bad that basically her heart stopped and the way she described it, it was just like she's laying on the table delivering the baby and the doctors are around and at the same time they've had another emergency come in and, and the place is going crazy so she's come out of her body and she's up above the doctors watching all this and seeing them running in and out for the other patient and stuff and she just you know kind of watch is watching this and then the next thing she said is like she just went to this place it was very peaceful right. and uh she's seen relatives that had passed before you know passed mm -hmm. and she come to this one spot and, and i'm trying to remember if she's she didn't see Jesus or God, but she seemed like this bright light with bright white cloudy stuff, sort of like. Uh -huh. And it talked to her. It told her that she had to go back. And she said she didn't want to go back. Right. <laughs> and, and you can imagine, well, you can't imagine when you're giving birth and, and it's coming out the wrong way, it, it is pretty painful, I imagine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So she's like, I don't want to go back. And it pointed, she said, it kind of pointed down and and said, you have to go back. You have something special that you have to do. Yeah. And 
And then the next thing you know, she said she's in her body pushing like heck and uh, gave birth to Christmas. And uh, during this time afterwards, she found out that they had put the paddles on her and everything. And she was telling the doctors and nurses about what she saw and what they were doing and everything. And it scared the crap out of them. <laughs> <laughs> so would but, imagine. Uh, so she had no she had no idea that like she actually had the paddles and stuff being done to her that entire time, right? Exactly. She didn't know none of that until she had come back into her body after she delivered the baby and uh you know, they were talking and stuff. Okay. It wow. just she just described it was the most precious, best feeling you could experience, she said, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh but what got her all the years is that voice that she seemed, seems to think it was, you know, God or Jesus telling her she had to go back and there was something very important that she had to do. Right. And all the way up until my father passed away, Grandpa, uh, you know, she always wondered what it was because she always felt like well, she was not she wasn't important or anything. But after Daddy died. She got the feeling that, you know, that was what was her important thing because dad died so young and the kids were young and she had to survive to make sure everybody was okay. Right. And that was, you know, that was the end of that one. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I, I remember the wow. majority of that story. Um, I, I remember one detail that she talked about, like uh, walking on like a gold street or something like that well i don't know about that i just know i don't remember that uh, I, might, I, remember, I might just be <laughs> popping that in my, my own mind or something think about the elder road I, I think yeah, right. so <laughs> she never described that part everything that she described described up there while she was uh I, there is one thing when she first got up there you know she had described like she was going through a tunnel uh-huh. And on each side, that's when she was seeing her relatives that had passed away. Okay. And the father that she went to the end of this tunnel, or or that's where all that white, I guess, like cloud-like area was, uh-huh. and where I talked to her. Gotcha. <laughs> Ooh, you need to do something about that cough, Mama. Oh, I know. It's a pain in the hiney. <laughs> <laughs> well, we really appreciate you sharing that yes, story with us. Absolutely. I definitely did not remember all of that, so wow. thank you. <laughs> and, you know, I'm sure there's some parts that I'm messing up because it seems like she talked to one of her relatives or something, but I, I can't remember exactly. I think I remember who it was. Um, didn't she have a brother, I want to say, that got I don't Murdered. want to be insensitive, yes. but he got beat to death. Yes. that's. See, I'm thinking that too, but I don't want to say 100% because I can't remember 100%. Right. But it seems like she talked about talking to him or something. And then he, you know, just rushed on and then kept going to that white, white area. I think it was him, or I might be confusing something else, but I remember it was a relative that had died and his, the eye got knocked out of its socket and was... Yeah, that was her brother. Okay, that was right. Okay. Uh huh. Uncle Boyd. Okay, yeah, that's right. Well, like I said, I really appreciate you sharing the story with us. Um, I'll definitely give you a call later. <laughs> okay, thanks. And, and, it's always good hearing you guys. Of course. I tell you what, keep up the good work. It'll pay <laughs> off. I've left myself silly listening to some of the stuff you guys have talked about. And I tell you what, I love watching it on YouTube because you can see your expression and see some more of this stuff. Because just listening to it, just don't do it justice sometimes. <laughs> I appreciate that. Appreciate the kind words. Yeah, we, we have very expressive faces, I guess. Yes, we do. Yeah. And you guys, you two really work good together. Your voices and everything well, sounds you. great. Appreciate so keep the compliment. up good work. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> That's what moms done. are there for. I love for. you, too. I'll oh, call you later. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye. Moms are great. Moms are great. <laughs> I love my mom. Well, yeah. No kidding. 
Wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Wow. So that was the basically how the stories or the belief in afterlife was instilled in me. I heard. I, I, got, I can understand it. I heard that story off and on from when I was a little bitty kid. You know, all those years. Uh, something uh, I I want to kind of bring up now is like with the whole tunnel vision yeah. thing and the like seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. Right. Right. There's also a theory that in your mind, uh, through that traumatic event, it goes all the way to the very, very back of your memory to your very first memories of being born. And that tunnel is you being, you know, it's, it's so crazy out the down. It's so crazy. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's, it's a to lot wrap to your chew mind. On, yeah, yeah. To wrap your mind around it. It is just, it's, it's intense. I'm stumbling all over my words, and it's just because this is such a hard thing to wrap your mind around. Like, you know, you have your own beliefs and whatnot, and then you hear all these stories, everybody else's beliefs, and you don't know what's right, what's wrong. Um, and it definitely gets to you like your, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like your mortality you know it's mm-hmm. it's really kind of like it puts it in perspective right exactly mm-hmm. and you you only get so much time on this world that's for sure and whether it's you know just this life and then you go to another it's still this little piece of it's fucked up sometimes in this world and a lot of it's beautiful you know and it's uniqueness in itself is just amazing and it's hard to wrap your mind around, especially nowadays, you know, we're going through a pandemic right now. <laughs> and then you've got all the other stuff America's dealing with on top of that. It can really, really darken your thoughts on life and everything. But this is just one of those waves. You get through that wave and right. you do what you can. Yeah. Get through it and you just got to make it, make the best of it. Excuse me. So, it's just it just blows me away. <laughs> it just blows me away that that these things happen. Yeah. And you've been probably like you said, you wanted to get, you know, your mother's opinion on it because it happened so long ago and mm, yeah. you know, and, but you lived it. You heard you were told this any time you saw her, it was always brought up. I mean, this is something that you knew about growing up. Yeah. And I think the only reason why my mom's foggy a little bit on the memory of it is cuz my grandma's been dead for like Right. Uh, it's been 11, 11 years this yeah. year, maybe 12. Yeah. Miss her so much. <laughs> Mine too. I know. I know the feeling. That's the hardest part, I think, is, you, you know, people passing away and then it's just like, they're always going to be gone, you know. But if if there is the idea and the belief system, or if you find the proof that you're looking for or you feel is true, then that is the answer you're looking for. Yeah. Whether it be... That they did go on to a different place. Are they okay over there? Mm-hmm. Do you feel fine about the fact that, okay, this is what has happened. Can you accept it? I mean, there's so many different questions. Yeah. I've got a little bit of a story that I'll bring back. And then Paul's got something he'd like to share as well. Yeah. Just a real well, real quick thing. Yeah. yeah. We'll be right back after this. Uh, I don't know if it's an ad or if it's a message. little funny message. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll be right back, folks. And welcome back. Welcome back. All right. So my story real quick, not at all a near death experience, but it was something along the lines of like, it was such a vivid dream. And this was after my dad had passed away and the dream, very interesting. <laughs> um, so we're in, I'm in like a field of tall wavy grass and it's in rolling hills, right? I mean, this is probably like the brightest day, the most colorful green grass I'd ever seen in my life. And my dad and I have always had this infatuation with like military equipment, mostly like jets and stuff. But out of nowhere, I see a submarine, not slithering, but sliding across the hills, forming with the hills. And it's not a psychedelic trip, I promise. <laughs> but 
he's on top of the <laughs> submarine, almost like he's surfing it in a sense. And we're not talking like a gigantic submarine. There's like a smaller version of a submarine. But comes to a stop. It turns vertical and like bobs like a like a fishing bob bobber in the water kind okay. of thing, you know. So yeah. it's bobbing up and down. Right. And I do not for the life of me remember us having a conversation per se, but it was almost like his way of or even my way of interpreting, you know, I'm in heaven doing this cool shit now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's <know>? go. <laughs> so after I, I woke up from that, I, I just I, I felt more at peace with, you know, all that. But when you woke up, did, did it feel really real? to you at that point oh for sure okay. like i it was one of those i guess you would say a vivid dream where yeah. like i had control over it right. in a sense like right i was moving around any way i wanted to and i was just taking in all the stuff like just the scenery in general was so amazing looking wow. but and just how I mean, seeing a submarine <laughs> on land, first off, going across wavy grass, and then... And your dad's surfing on it. Exactly. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... <laughs> Look at me, boy! <laughs> right. Well, yeah, that, that was definitely not a near-death experience whatsoever, but... um, I don't know. It was nice, a, a nice little uh, relief for me after that happened. Yeah, because, you know, moving forward... That everything's okay. Yeah, exactly. Nothing wrong with that. Interesting. Why? All right. So you had a little story. Just, a, just something really small before we go into our three shots. But I wanted to share a quick little story um, that actually happened here uh, in Cleveland uh, last year. Uh, Fox 8 News reporter uh, Musa Reed actually did a story about a young four-year-old. And this actually had to do with a near-death experience for this child. So... Real short here, uh, this woman, Brittany T uh, Tomek of Brunswick, her daughter, um, her name is Zola. She was born, um, so about six months when she was born, from that point from zero to six months, um, she wasn't developing like other children. So they were getting a little concerned. So they talked with doctors and whatnot uh, for her. They started to do some therapies for her. And then some of the issues she had, she had... Uh, white spots on her heart. She had a cyst on her brain. This is all within less than a year old. She was having constant seizures. And one of the EMTs actually recommended that she uh, get her tonsils removed to help with sleep apnea to help channel that issue. So in the midst of that, she had her tonsils taken out. Doctors sent her home. The family thought everything was fine. Then like one of the following days, uh, the young girl Zola goes to her mom, not saying she's not feeling well, opens her mouth and not to gross anyone out, but she had like a black mass. Blood was everywhere. She had to get her back there. She's freaking out. So they run tests and things on her, try to help with the situation. And then once that kind of goes about, um, they have to do a surgery to basically help out with her condition. I'm not going to go into the information about that, but this is a condition that she will end up living with for most of her life. She'll be able to try to help balance it with medications. But between the time that that surgery was, you know, completed and they went home after probably several months, um, the daughter actually started talking to her mom about her encounter and what happened. And the strange thing was her daughter just says to Brittany, she's like, well, I, you know, I can't wait to see God again. The thing with the family is, is that they had said that they have no religious, really religious affiliation or ties. And they really didn't teach us that the girl's four years old at this point now. But she basically got the information um, when her uh, when Zola was going to like gymnastics. I think the mother was saying she's like, that was the first time where her mom had said, hey, guess what? Um, this is what was said when I met God. And she said, well, what, what did he say, sweetie? She said, well, you know, basically he gave me a hug and thanked me uh, for being his friend. And then at that point, she just started getting more open about her experience that she said she ended up sitting next to God, gave him a hug and said, you know, 
everything's going to be fine. But what the real kicker was is that she started telling more and more of her friends about this. The parents weren't aware of this. Teachers are calling saying, my kid's saying that God's real. And if you're not a believer, you're wrong. (laughs) But just the idea that this four-year-old just came out of nowhere and told her, her mom, like, yeah, I saw God. And at four, she was like, I didn't talk about any of this kind of stuff yeah, because yeah. she's not, you know, she was like, I don't think she was old enough yet. Right. So religion wasn't pushed against this child. So the child had this experience right. and people are still dumbfounded thinking, wow, that's crazy. How could that happen? Well, she's the only one to attest to it. She was the one that said she was there. Right. I don't know how can a four year old make that up. I don't know. Well, I mean, a lot of pushback on this subject is really right. like, um, you know, people just saying that your brain's just hallucinating something right. and you're just, you have all this ability to imagine these great things. But when it comes from a child who has no life experience whatsoever, no. you know, imagining something of that nature. Right. The cognitive abilities are not established yet. Right. They're not grown. So it's like that just comes out and says, Mommy. Yeah. That's, God was with me. That's hard to argue with. You know? Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so that was just really cool. And and as far as things are going, looks like she's living a typically normal life, but she's going to have to be aware of those situations potentially if hemorrhaging happens. But at least at this point, she can live a normal life, mm-hmm. you know, and she got something that most of us will say they didn't ever encounter. I mean, wow, that's crazy. Uh, just kind of a wrap up on this yeah. and stuff is, uh, you know, obviously there's plenty of, of biological and scientific explanations for these right. things. A lot of it has to do with, um, you know, the loss of oxygen to your brain as we discussed earlier, but also, um, you know, they've done studies where they've compared experiences between people who have had near death experiences as well as taking drugs, uh, in particularly DMT and, uh, it's a uh, dimethyl trithylite. I think I probably said that wrong. I'll put it here, whatever. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, eerily the same. Mm-hmm. A lot of the same words yeah. were used to describe both experiences. And our bodies naturally create DMT. And I wonder if you get put into such a traumatic experience, if your body automatically releases that DMT. Right. And that's where the experiences come from. But, I mean, who knows? I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that happen in this world that there's no explanation no. for. I mean, really. <laughs> no. But uh, before we get into our three shots, I would like to shoot this out, out there, you know. <laughs> Um, you know, belief in the afterlife kind of, I mean, can you, can you believe in the afterlife and not believe in the paranormal? Because I think that'd be really hard. I would, I would agree. <laughs> I would think that would make, that would be tough to decipher. But I would like to think this cause I did write it down, but, and I don't know when else I could share this, but here's a theory I have on heaven and you know how we have pictures of the galaxies out there, you know, where you've got one square and there's like a million other galaxies out there. So is it like, this is the end? Is that where they go? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, is like, what if every other galaxy that you see right. out in space, what if that's somebody's individual world, like heaven, <laughs> you know, <laughs> got your own planet, <laughs> got your own slice of the universe. <laughs> anyway, it could be yours. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of this is really cool. Uh, it definitely it it makes you think. What do you? I do want to hear your thoughts. I would be um, interested to hear what our you know doesn't matter what kind of religious background no, you have or just your own ideas. Yeah. I'd love to hear uh, different your sp- ideas. Perspectives. Family, friends, family mainly. If you got something like that, just let us know. We would love to hear about it. Yeah. But, all right, folks. It is that time. Oh, here it comes for our. Three shots of bunny. Do it. Roll that tape. Do it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So uh, we're going to start this off with uh, 
my wife's pick. Okay. I had to remember who picked this one this week. Yeah. It says uh, Jess pick right there. I wasn't looking at that at the time. <laughs> but all right. So this is uh, from my wife with love. <laughs> There's a giant spider on the wall. Oh, shit. Is that fake? <laughs> I hate you, Ron. <laughs> Jess, you're going to get that. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> That'll be an instant replay, I know. Oh, man. That's funny. <laughs> Roll the tape. You're like, you're like, what's up with the spider? And I'm like, hmm? uh, ah. I'm not gonna lie, that got us hard. I bet. I I was like a cat getting scared. I, I was yeah. off the couch. Right. I hate spiders. Uh. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul. Uh. Let's see what you got here. You got another um, one. I, you know, I actually came up with something yesterday. Let me see if I still have it. Uh, okay. I don't have a title, but I'll just say something that we all encounter in married life. <laughs> That's as nice as I can say it. Man, po you're going to be aware of this. Pooping, roll it. Pooping with the door open? No, just roll okay. it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying I do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, David, can you give me a drink, please? Will you call me? <laughs> David. Am I in trouble? <laughs> what, is, what is today? <laughs> Why are you calling me David? Speak to me. <laughs> That's like I know. I know you such can, a concerned look on his I, face. I know you can relate to this, but you know how it is. It's like. Your wife might have a nickname for you. Might not be your first name. It could be Babe or whatever. Then all of a sudden, she just drops the first name. You're like, "What did I not do? What did I do wrong?" I I don't feel that at all because my wife calls me all <laughs> kinds of names. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's just like just the sheer terror. Like, oh god, I'm gonna go to the doghouse now. Yeah, the look on his face from it immediately happens. Like, huh? <laughs> he like almost feels like he burps. He's like, "Excuse me." <laughs> But yeah, that's just, uh, babe. <laughs> All right. So All right, what you got here, Ron? Got a setup for me? I do have a setup okay. actually. And this spawns from the last episode where, um, you tried to retire a certain, <laughs> you tried to cancel farts, Paul, and you started a war that I don't think you were ready for. <laughs> So I up the ante on this one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Take that shit. <laughs> play, play again. <laughs> that was just way too quick. Guys. He's he's forcing a fart. You never trust a fart. <laughs> <laughs> he puts his hand back there to fill. He's like, there's the whole thing. He's like there. cupping it. Oh, shit. Well, oh, one more time to see that. <laughs> <laughs> what came out of his ass? <laughs> Did he just shit, shit a brick of cheese? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> Got a lump in my pants. <laughs> Farts are funny and they will not be canceled, sir. <laughs> so it's on, huh? <laughs> it's on. <laughs> Fake quote. <laughs> <laughs> Good oh, stuff, Rod. Good, good stuff. <laughs> <sighs> oh, jeez, man. <laughs> I, I love this section. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, 
Thank you so yes. much for sticking around. If you're still watching, <laughs> uh, this de- this definitely was uh, hard to get through a yeah, little bit, we just apologize. because it's just my thing of it is is there's so much information that I looked up and I've listened and watched so many stories on near death experiences, and I was hoping to get stories to tell on this thing, but I just couldn't pick one you know it's it's uh it's hard because there's so so much information and you're are all trying to describe some unearthly idea that they can't explain in our language basically so i don't know it's just firing at all cylinders here just trying to get through the episode <laughs> these are age-old questions man yeah we've been all we've been asking the, i mean just you know humanity for years right yeah like we said it, let us know what you think happens when we die um no hold barred <laughs> if you think that the lights go out and you hear a giant flushing of a giant toilet <laughs> i i believe that too maybe <laughs> but yeah we're still running a contest till the end of march uh yes. we're trying to name this guy right here name our ghost with the uh, most if uh if you leave a suggestion on our comment for any of our paranormal month videos on youtube or you can send it into our email at uh info at thunderrooster.com and if uh we'll pick the best one we think fits our little ghost fella and uh you know, we'll send you a free shirt for the for the thought. <laughs> but thank you so much for Thanks tuning in. Again. Uh like and subscribe. We're on that road to one hundred right now. Mm-hmm. And, wanna thank uh, wanna thank Ron's mom for uh stopping by yes, on the program. Much. That thank was you. great. Yeah. We appreciate that. She's a busy lady and as you can tell, she's probably not feeling that great with right. that kind of cough. Man. But yeah, thanks mom. I love yeah. you. <laughs> Hope you're proud of your baby boy. <laughs> Ronnie. <laughs> I love you, Ronnie. Uh, All right. Well, again, folks. seriously, thanks again. We really appreciate you. Check us out. Next week, next week, we're going to go and end this uh, this uh, Paranormal Month hard in the paint. We're going to cover uh, demonti- demonic hauntings. Oh, shit. Let me try that again. I'll cut that part out. Right Demonic hauntings. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Demonic hauntings. All right, folks. I uh, hope you have a good rest yes. of your week. Enjoy. And we will check you out. See you next later. week. Peace. Roosters out. Roosters out. <laughs>